Hey y'all, so we are back to talk about grownish. <laughs> Episode 9, you beat me to the punch. I just don't know. I just don't know where grownish is going. I really don't. And I probably say that in every review. But I seriously do not know where grownish is going at all with any of this. Because... <laughs> Like, the internship, Jazz and Dez, Doug and Kiela. First of all, I just want to say, I know that I might have been Team Zuka in the past, but now that they made Zuka, like, officially not a thing anymore, like, I knew just by some of the things that Luca had said to Zoe previously in Season 4, and at the end of season three, like when he chewed her out at the end of season three, when she talked to him about even recreating anything with Aaron, the way he responded, I knew he still had feelings for her, regardless of whatever him and Jillian had. Jillian was just a distraction. Luca has had eyes for Zoe since the first time they met. And like Kiela said, when she was reading him after Aaron punched him in the face, that he is always trying to keep Zoe around, like lingering in the event that like he may have another chance. But I just don't know how Zoe was ob oblivious to all of it. Like as a woman, like you know when a man likes you and you claim that you love Aaron, you're in love with Aaron, you know how Aaron feels about you you wouldn't have even put him kind of, I mean, she didn't put Aaron in a predicament to swing on Luca, but it didn't help. So <laughs> it kind of aided in it slightly. And Aaron has always gone over and above for Zoe, regardless of if they were together or not. And so he finally gave Zoe his trust and Nothing hurt Aaron more to see her sitting down with Luca after everything he has cost her. Even after, if we flash back to season two, when Zoe was trying to, when Zoe and Luca were together, and Zoe was trying to market Luca to Joey, and Joey ended up liking her. And so she always had to be in a position to sacrifice something for Luca. But Luca never really sacrificed anything for Zoe. He was always kind of in the way of stopping Zoe from shining her light. And I never really thought about that because I was so like Team Zuka. And plus, I thought Luca was fine, but this neither here nor there. I mean, Aaron's fine, but you know what I'm saying? I just had, I was drawing more to Luca. <laughs> but anyway, it's just the fact that like Luca has caused Zoe a lot. And then. Even trying to get over Zoe, Luca ended up hurting Zoe. So it was just like, you know, but I just, I just, I knew it. So are we going to get our whole Whitley, Byron, Dwayne, Luca, Trevor, Zoe, <laughs> Triangle? Please, baby, please, baby, please. <laughs> Zoe had just apologized to Aaron for like, Oh, for like coming at him, you know. I mean, when you're in love with somebody, and obviously Aaron is drastically in love with Zoe, and he finally like trusted her, she did something stupid, but she didn't realize like he does all of this stuff because that's how much he really cares for you. Was Aaron wrong for hitting Luca? Absolutely. But at the same time, Luca knows what he's doing. And Aaron knows that Luca knows what he's doing. They've had this whole thing since season one when they was in midnight class with Charlie. So, like, this was brewing. This was four years of brewing. So, I knew something was going to happen between the two. <sighs> Aaron was so hurt. Bro took all bro took a good amount of stuff out of his apartment. I don't know where he went, but 
hopefully he didn't go do anything to try to hurt Zoe because even though Zoe might have been oblivious, she didn't do anything with Luca. But she put herself in a position for something to happen. So hopefully Aaron doesn't, you know, do anything to hurt Zoe. But I think she's going to figure everything out. And plus, I think all of this is going to be eased over and see in episode 10 once it comes back in January. Um, yeah. Ki Ki Kiela, whatever her name is, she saw it. She saw it for what it was worth. She that's why she said something to Luca. She was like, Luca, you know exactly what you're doing. You know. Y'all having feel at the Luau crazy because she couldn't even get in contact with him, but yeah, he at the party. He can't even take care of his own child, but yeah, he at the party. So that's weird. But I think Gronish needs to go ahead and just nip this whole thing with feeling the butt. Is he gonna be in Luna Life? Is he not gonna be in Luna Life? Stop addressing, but not addressing the situation. Also, I always knew from season one that there was going to be something between Anna and Vivek. I always knew it because of the way, like, especially, like, the way he always looked at her, the way, like, with the outfits, like, when she went and changed her whole outfit so Vivek could look good or his outfit could be on theme and everything like that. But... After that watch thing and him knowing Anna, like I knew Aaron, I, I knew Anna and Vivek was gonna end up something was gonna end up happening. Didn't think it was gonna be an entanglement, but you know, I figured something would happen. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. Last night I was looking at Twitter because I wanted to see what was happening because I'm the type of person where I don't, I don't have to wait to know what's gonna happen. I can go ahead and know and then watch the episode and I can have a completely different view of whatever it is that happened. But I just think, like, that whole thing between Doug and Jazz. I don't know what beef. I actually, I do. I just wish that Diggy and Chloe didn't date in real life because it kind of messed up the plot line of the show. Like, they may say it didn't have anything to do with it and that they're just friends, but we saw the photos. They was dating. And so, I think them not dating anymore in real life has something to do with um, Jazz and Doug not being a thing on the show anymore. But them trying to date other people is just weird because we done had them for three whole seasons. And for them to just abruptly break up like that was, it was just whack. Like, it wasn't even nothing to talk about. It didn't even get discussed. It was nothing. Like, at least on a different world when Whitley and Dwayne had broke up and Willie was about to get married. She had one last conversation with Dwayne, like a sit down discussion about their relationship and why it didn't work out and everything like that. And we didn't really get that with Doug and Jazz and not trying to compare them to a different world, but we know this is a different world, Jason. So we don't gotta we don't gotta try to you know, we don't gotta try to beat around the bush with anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Also, um I just think that whole <laughs> Vivek trying to find somebody for them to match make with, that whole thing was just funny. I think that was just the committed relief part of the episode because it was, you know, other things going on in the episode that were weird. Um, I feel like as far as them being seniors, like we didn't get to see anything, at least the first two seasons, um, Gronish was more built around them going to class and like actually being in school as students. But junior year and senior year really didn't focus on them being in school at all. And like, I just feel like the college aspect of the show is gone. I know that like Aaron is a, a, a TA or a graduate teacher or whatever like that but they didn't really even focus he didn't even really have a focus on a show about that like and I thought that was missing because this was be his graduate year so I'm just like well like where is everything like I don't get it 
And like even with Dwayne being a graduate teacher on a different world, like we got to interact and meet some of the students. That's how, you know, we got introduced to like um Jada's character, Lena, and Dorian, the basketball player, you know, Charmaine. Like, I mean, I get that we got Key Key or whatever her name is, Luca's sister, but it's just, I don't really care for her character. I mean, she's just a filler to me. But, yeah. I don't know where grown shit's going. And I feel like these last 10 or 12 episodes of season four got to give or else the show is going to go down as a buzz. Like, I initially was attracted to grown because of the fact that I was so, like, into blackish. And Gronish was real good the first two seasons, but that break, that year long break is what did it for Gronish. I don't know if they just tried to throw something together for the audience, but it's been whack ever since. Season three was whack, and season four is whack so far, and we only got nine episodes. Like the timeline of things is just off to me, and I'm not trying to get up here to downgrade nobody's writing skills or. To talk about the show because obviously I'm still watching it. I'm still giving them some kind of rating. But I just think the writing has, has gone down in Gronish. Like they they go from like socially inclined episodes to like stuff like this. I'm like even, even with like the whole disaster between... Whitley and Dwayne and and Dwayne crashing Whitley's wedding and then they going on their honeymoon in LA. It still sh captured the moment of the LA riots with Rodney King. You know what I'm saying? Like it still had impact. And I don't I'm not feeling imp I'm not feeling impacted by Gronish. And Gronish is happening during my time. You know, different world happened twenty to twenty five years before I was even born you know what i'm saying like if you haven't had a chance and you got an amazon prime membership go and watch all of a different world from the beginning to the end they got all five or six seasons up there and it's a really good show and it's really like it really was for the culture i feel like grownish could have been the same thing but a more progressive type show but i feel like they just missed the mark on quite a few things like a lot of things have happened during the course of the four years that Gronish has been on TV, for them not to have had the impact that they could have had, if that makes sense. They, they even with the thing with Nomi, like, they could have done so much with her being a single mom in college that they dropped the ball with. Just, they hit and, they hit and miss, you know, every episode. Like, when the daycare closed, that was a good way to segue with, to being a single mom in college type thing. But they didn't do that. And that was the second time. Or her figuring out what she's going to do with her child's father. They dropped the ball with that. I mean, hopefully, like I said, at the second half of Gronish season four, they come out swinging. But I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to stay around and review it, but I just don't know. Was there anything else that happened in Gronish that was worth talking about? Besides Zoe having legit three internships and not finishing none of them. Which, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Team Vogue because she ended up... Um, she ended up... Showing off the line before it was due. I don't know why her job with Joey just done, didn't count. Like, I just don't know. But anyway... That's all I got for the seat for episode nine, y'all. Hopefully, the grown just don't drag this whole Aaron and Zoe thing out across multiple episodes, and we just handle it because I know they didn't work all this way up, building up this whole thing for Aaron and Zoe just for them to break up four seasons of the go back and forth between them to not even be together to get together. The end of season three to get to see the the halfway mark through season four for them to break up. So we'll see how this goes, y'all. We're gonna see. That's all I got.
like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more videos. Deuces.